Alright, I think we are live. Uh, let's give it, I guess let's give the stream a minute to kick in or something. It's on uh, late, low latency mode, so people should uh, should get it fairly quickly. Mm-hmm. I'll see if it pops up here in my uh, subscriptions. Yep. All right. Cool. All right. It looks like it's actually working. So um, yeah. before I started out, I guess I'll just give a, a quick intro. Um, I uh, I did this video, and every step of the way, something went wrong, and it had nothing to do mostly with PC engines. Uh, so I just thought I would do a behind-the-scenes thing in case anybody cared. And uh, Smoke Monster, of course, was my go-to guy for a lot of the PC engine stuff. Uh, which is why I bought the shirt just for that video, by the way. I love and, that. <laughs> and thank you. Uh, yeah, that's why I wanted you here today. Just uh, both. You really rocked it well, too. Oh, thank you. I, uh, <laughs> yeah, I wanted you here both for your PC engine knowledge and because you just, you know, you know about what goes on with a lot of the stuff I work on. So it's uh, it'll be great to have your opinion on all this stuff. So. Yeah, thanks for having me. So I How guess I'll just um, I'll start like uh, you know a little bit by bit. Uh, with the video and we'll pause as we talk but the one thing I certainly wanted to before I even really knew what kind of video I was doing I wanted to include that turbo graphics commercial because this is the one that when I was a kid like uh, it's a perfect place to stop it I saw these exciting teenagers playing this cool looking game console that nobody I knew had had at all so uh, you seem to have experience with it, though. Where where was your first time seeing or using a PC Engine or Turbo Graphics? So yeah, so I've been I never had one back in the day. So maybe it's one of those kind of things, kind of like you know, never had a Sega CD or a 32X, so I had to get those. Mm -hmm. But for whatever reason, maybe 10 or 11 years ago, I started. Uh, I think my first my first one was just a Turbo Graphics 16 I picked up. And then I really, really liked it, uh, once, especially once the EverDrive came out. And I've gone totally crazy with uh, PC Engine stuff. And now it's kind of PC Engine and Neo Geo are the two things that I collect the most hardware for. Really? So I've got a pretty – and luckily I did that. You know, I got most of it before the prices went up. So I could not afford the stuff nowadays. I'll just say that. But, I mean, <laughs> I have several of – at the end of the video when you showcase the different kinds of setups and you say this would cost two grand or whatever – you know, I got that kind of stuff back when you could buy it broken for a hundred bucks. You need to get a super graphics <laughs> shipped from Japan for like 100, 120 bucks. That's funny. You know, ten years ago, and just had to recap it or whatever. Of course, mine was a, a little bit more of a disaster because of mm -hmm. had the uh, post issue that you talk about. Yeah. Or had uh, it yeah, broke so, seventy two traces on mine. Yeah, I guess we'll save that for that part of it because I want you to go into more mm -hmm. detail about that one. But uh, yeah, for me, the first time I ever really used a Turbo Graphics or P, uh, or PC Engine, I think I had got a Turbo Graphics, but I, I really just used it for testing. And then I was testing one of Voltar's original um, Duo RGB mods. And I did a full recap on it. I had sent that duo to Australia for Tim Worthington to mess with. <laughs> so it had traveled the world. And when I finally got it back, I put Voltar's board in it. And it was perfect. So I was very spoiled. Uh, it certainly looked much better than the commercial. But this one always cracked me up. Yeah. And shout out to, I think, Keen for Listerine is his uh, screen name, who got the audio fixed in this one. Because the audio hum was so freaking bad on this. But I really wanted this commercial, because that's the one I saw as a kid. So... And then, of course, I yeah, got to throw in some fancy shots in the beginning, just a teasery, you know? The only thing I remember of it back in the day was seeing it come up in magazines occasionally and some commercial for, I think, a Turbo Express mm -hmm, mm -hmm. with Bonk yeah. and the TV add-on. Uh, I'll have cool. to look through them and see if that actually exists or if it's just from a Sears catalog in my mind is messing things up, but... Yeah, the yeah. Bonk, Bonk commercial is the one I, I uh, originally thought of, but I had confused these two in my head. So the one that I had played at the beginning was the one with, um, uh, you know, just the excited teenagers and the cool, fast 90 shots of, uh, you know, cutaways and stuff. But the mm -hmm. Bonk was what I definitely remembered. And I remember somebody got it on a Nintendo, and it looked like garbage, which is why I included that at the, the very beginning of this, too. So, um, yep. so uh, 
a little behind the scenes secret here. So you see me with the smoke monster shirt, and then uh, you, it immediately cuts to this box that uh, Brooklyn Video Games had to complete in box core graphics. So the, the way I started doing it with this video, which I liked and no one's complained about, no one seemed to have noticed, is I wrote the script. I never write the script for weekly stuff because that just takes too long, but for you know the, the fancier videos now, I do. But I wrote the script and then I recorded the whole thing audio only. And then I put just placeholders of myself, like a still picture. And I tried to fill it all with, um, uh, you know, with B-roll, just so give people something fun to look at while, you know, you're listening to me drone on about all this stuff. But uh, it, this is one of the few shots in here that's just filler. It has no point to it. Because <laughs> I just, um, I have, you know, it was a cool shot from Brooklyn Video Games, but it just kind of drives me nuts when some, uh, you know, big fancy professional YouTubers are doing this the entire time. And it makes me dizzy because they're reading off the, you know, off a cue mm -hmm. card. And it's I'd rather just memorize four <laughs> lines at once. And so I recorded the whole thing audio only. And that that me with the smoke monster shirt was recorded the day before it went live. At the, you know, the last that was the last thing I recorded was my live shots when I was editing all this together. So kind of funny. Cool. Yeah, it all worked out. I mean, your videos. I mean. They've always been good. Don't get me wrong, but your I think the Dreamcast video seemed like kind of a breakthrough for you, and then this one is pushing it kind of even further. Yeah, thank you. I'm trying. I'm trying to. I'm trying to mix in quality with what I love to do, the nerdy side of things. Um, this uh, this was probably one of the most wasted times in the video as well. I wanted to show how bad the NES version of Bonk looked next to the PC Engine <laughs> version. But um, the open source scan converter has a really hard time syncing on to PC Engine stuff. Um, and uh, I was trying to use the Mister just for fun. So I was just trying to find different ways. And I don't have an RGB NES anymore. That's, I had to sell and trade stuff around. That's coming with the NES RGB 2.0. I'm reinstalling all that stuff. But, so I ended up having to use emulation uh, for both of these shots just to and make it fair, you know, so they're both equally crappy. But that was the one thing that Steve <laughs> noticed immediately. He's like, "Why does why does this look so much crappier than all the rest of the shots on here?" <laughs> mm -hmm. So, yeah. Did you ever play the NES version? Um, not. I don't. I might have fired it up a few times. I don't. I don't really remember it. No. Well, it's definitely. I worth, didn't play it back in the day. Yeah, it's two minutes of your time on the Mister just to to see it compared. And I also wanted to make a, a big point in this one. Um, that, you know, this is, this video is only about real hardware. Because uh, I get so many comments on all my other videos that say, why, why not just emulate? Well, yeah, absolutely. There's a time and a place for that, but not, not this video. <laughs> so yeah, I wanted to put that in showcase. right away. Like, you know, hey, don't complain. And no one has actually, so. so it's that good. <laughs> The, the super graphics, all the spinner shots. And it, what's funny is uh, that that spinner shot right there, that was like the day that um, Mobius Strip Tech had sent me the super graphics, the SSD S3, I think something else. And you could see right on the sides, kind of by where the, um, the video input port is, that was scratched the day that I got it. So when I, I received that core graphics from my buddy Jordan in Japan, and he, um, so that, it only took one time putting the SSD S3 on to scratch that thing up. So that's, uh, that was yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. You could tell Definitely which of the older shots of that, because it has the older DIN without the RGB mod in this one. <laughs> so those, is that your spinning setup there? Or yeah. Those were... That looks good. Thank you. It's just, um, it's like an old, uh, like a, a, a shelf from something I don't use and uh, on one of those Lazy Susan spinners, but the button broke, so it won't stop spinning. So whenever I'm shooting these things, I gotta like, it just, it's constantly spinning. So I gotta get the camera mm -hmm. all set up. Yeah, so uh, only one person so far noticed, but those are both PC Engine cards. <laughs> oh yeah, you were talking about the... Uh... TurboGrafx-16 versus PCE uh, cue card differences there. Yeah, uh, and I think it's really just a pin difference, which is why the devices like the PC Engine can work, right? Something like that. I, I never really follow that too closely since I've always I've been using a uh, 
Turbo Everdrive most of the time, and then my he- my whole collection is PC- PCE stuff. I got rid of my original TurboGrafx-16 and my one whatever game I had for it, Keith Courage or something. Mm-hmm. So this is another funny thing that I didn't even realize until after it was all over. But this button right here... Um, yeah, I, I saw those wires on it. I was like, what is that? Yeah, so uh, maybe a day into using this thing. I had borrowed it from uh, John, who owns Tasty Chicken in Brooklyn. Uh, he was the one that brought that whole spread when he came. Yeah, yeah. And cool dude. the thing popped off. I'm going, man, what a shitty design. I can't believe <laughs> Crix would use hot glue to hold a button down. This wasn't on mine. <laughs> And then it only wasn't until I brought it back to John where he was like, no, I put that on there. I couldn't get my finger in to press the button. <laughs> so all of these shots of the turbo overdrive was with John's mod to it. So, oops, I hope and no one's noticed that yet. <laughs> I saw it there. I was like, what's going on? Is that like in a, some weird revision or something where you had to add your own reset button? Yeah. And what's funny is I never, I never pressed the reset button on mine because I never really could get my finger in there either. I mean, I got you know, big hands, so it's just before I got fat. That was broken. I had, I've games, always too. had uh, like, three D mm-hmm. shell on mine with it has like a nubby thing on it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that's Here's your idea you. right here. This was uh, your idea that I stole when you had first posted the thing about just swapping the output connector in uh, the multi tap mm-hmm. device. That was a good call. Yeah, I wrote up a little guide for that at the uh, PCEFX forums, if anybody wants to see the inside. It's like you said, it's just straight up the easiest thing you can ever do. And you can even uh, you can even leave the original dongle on there so that it can be both PCE and TurboGrafx-16. Oh, so you, you can... basically have two wires hanging out the back. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. You know what? I realized I forgot to put a link to that. Could you... Uh... Uh, if you send it to me, oh, sorry, there's going to be sirens and horns and stuff here. It's just live. What are you going to do? It's New York. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you could, I, I don't know how I forgot to put that in there, but yeah. And, uh, I'll shoot I, you a link. I almost just had still shots. So this is another thing is I didn't have access to everything I wanted. So I just texted um, Evan Amos, the photographer, and was like, Hey, would you be pissed if like the first seven minutes of my next video was just all your pictures? <laughs> he was like, you know, no, of course not. But it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't until I actually went to Brooklyn Video Games and uh, brought my controller and realized they had one as well. Uh, so that's uh, that was a cool shot. So any clear clear glass that you see is all taken at Brooklyn Video Games. Cool. Hmm. Yeah, I'll definitely remember to put the link in there now. You do get some goofiness with it, weirdly enough. Like if you use a, because you can. Another nice thing is you can use a really long extension cable when you put it when you replace the cable. Mm-hmm. Somebody said that you get some games have errors in them and it might need some kind of filtering or something going on. So maybe it's a good thing. Maybe it's something we could have like uh, Rene or Voltar or someone look at to see if that's true or if it was just a quirk or something. Yeah, I think Rene would definitely be the guy for that. He's been pretty busy lately, but uh, I'll I'll mention it to him. Um, so right here, uh, it's a bad shot because there's dust on it, but after I was done with the video and I shot the close-up of the scratches, I, I, I started looking up super graphics on eBay because I was like, I scratched Mobius' super graphics. And then when I went back to edit and I saw it there, I went, oh, it came scratched. <laughs> okay. <Sure. laughs> so he, I mean, he's a good dude. He was understanding about everything anyway, but he realized that it happened before he even shipped it. So. Mm-hmm. Super graphics are like getting to that price where you're gonna want to fly them yourself in its own seat on the airplane pretty soon. Yeah, right. All right. So this is something that I had to reach out to you for help, and that I uh, I still am only slightly understanding. So the orange one is the pro, and the the regular one's just the arcade card. And for people that want to use the arcade cards, the regular one will work with the duos because the duos already have a little bit in there. And um, the other one will work on all of them. Uh, and the pro, the pro in this video, when I started looking it up, the prices were wildly different. You can get yeah, pros yeah. for 110 or 500, and you could get regulars for 100 or 500. So my advice was just grab a pro if you don't know what you're doing, because if you do know what you're doing, you know you could just understand what I mean and move along. Um, do you agree, disagree? Do you have any thoughts on that? And are you drinking a beer? Damn it. Yeah, I Fine. am. <laughs> I'm upholding our tradition. 
right. Oh, you got I, a PBR? It was a little I've early a, for me, but fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> I've got this Brazilian, or no, this is German, imported here, Kaiser Dome. <laughs> I'm jealous. I Cheers. wish I could trade you. I wish I could trade you over the internet. <laughs> I haven't gone on a beer run in a while because everything's just a little off topic. I was in Jersey the other day and spent like $30 on beer. And I'm just staring at, at the, you know, at the receipt. Like this would have been 75 in New York City. It's the same beer. Nice. So that's why, mm-hmm. um, you know, sometimes. Um, but all right, yes. So the Smoke Monster thoughts on arcade cards. Yeah, I would say. So if you're planning on, yeah, it depends your route you're gonna take. If you're sane, okay, and you're just if you're sane right now. You're going to buy a PC Engine and a Super STS-3 and just be done with all this. Yeah. If you're not, if you're absolutely insane, then you can go down these other um, rabbit holes. And so if you decide from the beginning, like a lot of people, I I used to always tell people to get a Duo. Like I always thought a Duo was like one of the best deals out there. It's a really great system, even at 300 bucks. I mean, like, come on, a PS4 and Xbox One are 300 bucks, and it's way better than those. <laughs> So if you're going to go the duo route, you can you used to be able to save a lot of money on the arcade card duo. Like it used to be like half the price. So that was definitely a, the way to go back if the prices, you know, hadn't changed. If the prices are the same though, yeah, just get a the and the other nice thing about the arcade card is just go with the Pro, I mean. Cuz the Pro it'll work on any like if you decided to go with a briefcase setup and I have you or um your super graphics with the super CD ROM 2, like I have, mm-hmm. uh, or anything really. I mean, the like the arcade card is the one card to rule them all, and it'll boot pretty much every game except for like um, Altered Beast and a few others require specific cards, which you, you can do those with the EverDrive, like you said. And also with Altered Beast, I wonder maybe I should bring that up when you get, get to it, but there is one revision of it that'll boot on any. Uh, any system card. It's the um, Japanese uh, version that's HA10109. If you see that in the Tosec pack, or, or yeah, I think it's Tosec, mm-hmm. HA10109, that is the revision of Altered Beast that you want, and that'll boot. Oh, there it is. That'll boot on any system card. Interesting. Okay. Mm-hmm. Or, I mean, if you own the original and you just download the CDR, burn it on good media. Yeah. Yeah, there's another shot of the duo. So, um, I guess uh, somebody in and the And you chat... explained it perfectly. Oh, okay. The the Pro, it was like um, you had to mail in, I think, to get it. Mm-hmm. Really? One of the two you had to actually, yeah, mail in something. to. Or it was only available through mail order. And then uh, the duo, but Nick, NEC loves to make things complex when it comes to hardware. And this isn't even the tip of the iceberg with their stuff. I mean, they have so many peripherals and combinations you can make. Uh, it's just crazy, and uh, they just the 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 duo has that tiny bit of extra memory in it, and so they made that cost reduced version of it with a tiny bit less memory, and so it functions the same as the Pro and a Duo, but it works on no other systems, I don't think, hmm. or it just works like a regular um, system card, but not as the arcade card, something like that. Gotcha. Now the Turbo EverDrive. Can you talk about how that could act as a super system card? Because I was under the impression that you need to download very specific ROMs of the super system card, and then launch those yeah. from the Turbo EverDrive. Yeah, that's a good thing to note. And um, let me see. What's the name? Elmer. Okay. Mm-hmm. So if you look, um, Elmer is the guy who has. Okay. So if you just load straight up. Um, the BIOS files for the uh, system cards and boot them in your EverDrive, there is a state that it can get into, uh, an endless loop kind of thing that can, over time, will damage your system. Mm -hmm. And it's just a matter of time how long that takes, just because of the way it works. But um, Elmer, on the PC Engine FX forums, posted patched versions that fix that. And so those are totally fine to use. And And I did link to those. um, I definitely remember to add that link. So... Yeah, he did the Super CD-ROM uh, version 3.01, and he did the TurboGrafx CD. So you can get that for either system, and that's the one you want. Awesome. Okay, that was one thing I didn't... There was a bunch of little details, like, uh, you know, the differences between the core graphics. I'll get to that in a minute. Somebody in the chat was asking about that. But, you know, I really did just have to, to make sure that... Um, 
you know, I, I tried to keep it as short as possible, and it's already 35 minutes. Uh, so, oh, it's, yeah, it's so hard to cover in one video. Yes. I don't know how you even manage this. So somebody in the chat, uh, or in the um, comments, or maybe they contacted me directly, said, uh, the PCFX is a totally different thing. And I probably shouldn't have even shown it here at all. I probably just should have shown the Turbo Express. Can you give like a quick rundown of what the PCFX is? Yeah, so the PCFX was when, you know, multimedia was becoming a big thing. And some companies, you know, like 3DO and the CDI and all of them, they started to think that we wanted these home media computer slash gaming devices. And the PCFX was NECs and it's... It actually has, I think, the same processor as the Virtual Boy inside of it. <laughs> Interesting note. It is full of such unbelievable crap. It's such a cool-looking system, and it's so powerful, and it has all this potential. But what's actually on it is, like, this smutty, weird stuff. It is obscene. The games but it is very Yeah, the games. Like, That's the games funny. that actually came out on it. So, um, <laughs> I mean, even if you're not... Like I'm not prudish or anything, but these are weird games. So it's a cool, it's an interesting little thing. I don't have one or anything. They're getting hard to find now, and uh, I think you have pretty much have to find someone in Japan who will get you one for you. Hmm. But it is pretty cool, and yeah, it is a totally different thing. Continue. Uh, it's not like a, a continuation or anything. Although I think it shared some of the That's the hardware funny. or something. Yeah, and then oh, I, and uh, oh, yep, go ahead. Sorry. I should clarify before we get off the arcade card. Totally. The reason why I said to just get the Super SDS3 is because it does arcade card. Mm -hmm. And so just right there, you know, already just today, that's going to save you 100 bucks. So you can knock $100 off the price of it. I, I actually refer to the arcade card as the Sapphire card because it's really the only game that I have interest <laughs> in playing if it's an arcade card. I know Strider is kind of cool. Yeah, I remember but, Arturo was telling me that when uh, I had him over when uh, I posted teaser pics of us using the super graphics and the upper graphics. Um, and I was like, well, what's, what's the point? of the arcade card and he's like one game pretty much maybe two <laughs> uh -huh. so it's a great game and it that's it's like that's a lot of us spent a hundred bucks on the arcade card just for sapphire yeah and uh so if you knock that off the price of the super sds3 it becomes an even better deal and you don't have to mess with all this stuff and eventually i mean the arcade card has already since i got mine probably doubled in price and it's going to triple because it's pc engine stuff and pc engine stuff if people don't know it, it's like PC Engine and Neo Geo hardware. It's just, and games are just very expensive compared to most other systems. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And uh, I really did want to show the um, uh, the Laser Active, and I couldn't I couldn't find any pictures. I think I reached out to a couple of Patreon subscribers and and friends, uh, and one person happened to have the picture just on their phone that they sent me right there. So thanks very much. I bothered a bunch of people about that actually. Um, and that is a cool thing, but that's one of those things that I was obsessed with when I first started Retro RGB. Like, oh, what if I find a laser active? Because I've never had a laser disc player, and maybe I could have it all in one. But, you know, I didn't realize yeah. how crappy all that stuff was. <laughs> well, if you had done it back then, man, you could sell it and make a fortune probably now. <laughs> yeah. So this is just me being dumb. Uh, I'm one of those dorks that laughs at my own jokes, and when I was sitting there at Brooklyn Video Games, I was like, how do I demonstrate that it doesn't have a port? So I was just like, what if I just, what if I just pretend to plug something into a flat piece of plastic? And there was, while I was mm -hmm. doing this, there was a um, King of Fighters tournament going on, <laughs> and there's a bunch of people there, and they're, they're like, in the middle of playing, they're looking up like, <laughs> what the fuck the? is he doing? <laughs> so, <oops>. uh -huh. <laughs> That uh, that that clip of you tr not plugging in had a very like game sacky or my life in gaming vibe to it there. Really? <laughs> Except that you didn't end up like tossing it across the room or uh, actually getting it connected. <laughs> and there was no sound effects. <laughs> uh huh. So the jail bars thing. This is something that um, this is something that always pisses me off. Is I could scale a video perfectly. And then play it on a 4K TV or a 1080p TV, and it looks great. But then you look at it on your phone, and uh, you can't see anything because the way it smushes it together. So mm -hmm. I was just trying to. A, a few people said, "Hey, try to get more still shots in there," but even those didn't really work great. So hopefully the examples I used were good enough. But I really bent over backwards to try and get good quality captures this time, um, and that's something that's coming next week too. A little spoiler there. Oh, cool. So the, uh, the yeah, I've seen this, you guys in the uh, retro roundtable do 
good stuff uh, showing off jail bars. I mean, it's hard to show on YouTube especially, and you guys, I think, do a good job with that. Yeah, the jail bars and um, and scan lines are almost impossible to get after compression and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. But uh, so this this graphics booster, I mean, maybe a year ago, maybe I said, Renee, I need you to send me a graphics booster right now. Zach has the one that I, I originally bought from you, so that means I'm never getting it back because it'll just sit in his garage until he, he feels like it, uh, sending it back. And he's, I was like, I don't have time to explain. Send it. And he, Renee just drops one in the mail. I forgot what it was. Whatever important, I absolutely have to have it reason didn't pan out. And then I emailed him. I was like, hey, I'm going to be doing this uh, uh, PC Engine video. Like, uh, can you send me one? He goes, didn't I already send you one? <laughs> well, I opened up a box, and there it was sitting there. So uh, uh-huh. this one uh, this one went to, to Chicken John again. Um, John from Tasty Chicken. I'm always tempted to call him Tasty John. I just i am not sure if his wife would like that very much. <laughs> but, mm. yeah, uh, he wanted one, and uh, Renee said, tell, tell John I love Los Pollos Hermanos. So uh, I thought that was funny <laughs> as hell. And that's the, I saw uh, the uh, the toasty reference there. Yeah, that's uh, that's something I did a <laughs> while back, and I just thought it was once again I'm dumb and laugh at my own jokes, so I had to put that in there. And Steve appreciated it, but uh, Steve went through the script on this one and was a tremendous help. Steve has been uh, doing some pretty crazy work with me behind the scenes that are it's finally going to start spilling into videos. But holy crap, I owe that guy a lot for all the help that he's given. And then, of course, cool. I didn't, never got the engine block, but uh, that's just the case for it. So, luckily, no one said, why did you use that thing? Why would you want it? It's exposed. Luckily, people actually watched the video and saw that there's really a case for it. So, mm-hmm. And once again... Uh, nobody is... caught... Uh, I put a, uh, a Bob Easter egg in one of my videos where you pop up. <laughs> really? <laughs> in my X... X... So I'm listing the consoles in my X68000 video that have the X68000 chip inside. And for some reason, I found a picture of you with your Neo Geo uh, MBS cab. And I, I, I just put the logo on the MBS that it has the, the 68000. And then I, I did it for you, too, that you have the X68000 inside you. That's funny. I like <laughs> it. That's funny as hell. Um, so this is the device. I had a bunch of comments about that. And um, I'm sure I'm going to offend everybody by saying this, but... The one thing that still baffles me is if you're the average person that comments on these videos that I don't know, that I'm not, you know, I don't have any interaction with, if I show them proof that something that they have purchased um, may not be as good as they thought, they get offended and mad as if I was personally attacking them. I even reached yeah. out to a shrink and asked if there was any way I could reword things to not piss people off, and I, I, I got blown off there too, so it's... How, the, but how does it make you feel, Bob? I, I mean, I feel like I let people down. I feel like if I had... I, you're never going to get through to the stubborn people, but I feel like if I explain things right... But once again, this is a 35-minute video, so I don't want to take five extra minutes to explain why you shouldn't dump 25 bucks on a throwaway device. Um, and while I'm certainly not a uh, an electrical engineer, the basic, uh, the basic thought around this is that it's um, it doesn't do the filtering properly, and the original one that I had purchased, which looks different than this, so I'm sure this circuit was um, improved. I think the date on there says 2018, and the one that I bought was two years ago, but the one that I bought was basically op amps directly out with, um, so it was just, um, it could send, it was sending uh, interference down the line, which could potentially mess with equipment, um, and I think the sync was, voltage was too high, but I mean, these things oh, are slapped typical. together, and while, yep. you know, just because something works doesn't mean it's good. That's that's something that people have a really hard time wrapping their head around. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I would uh, I would really skip this if I were you. I think Wes from Second Opinion Games has my old one now. I gave it to him just to, uh, just to mess with and see. I think, I don't know if he ever got a scope, but I think he was going to try to look at that just to see if he could tell what the differences are, too, but... Um, Zach has my other one. I bought two at the time just so we could all tear them apart. Zach hated it. Uh, and we were going to ha- do a video on it. I don't know what happened. Zach and I were supposed to do 100 videos and it never happened. But I wanted to do it with Zach, not Renee, because I didn't want it to look like Renee was just shitting on a competitor when it really is just it, the one that I got mm-hmm. wasn't a good piece of hardware. It had nothing to do with friends making the same thing. So I've done that before too. Like when some new. Uh... 
video hardware comes out, I usually will shoot Voltara Link and I'm Zach, and I just ask him. I'm like, just looking at this, and a lot of the time he can look at it. And he's like, I can tell just from the picture that that's wrong. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, uh, people have that thing. They also don't appreciate that people like yourself, who are in a position of where you're recommending things to people. You know, you we can't even if there was a clone out there you know, one of a hundred versions of it that was okay. Like, we can't go and recommend these things to people because <laughs> Voltar's here. How's hey, it going? Zach. Yeah, uh, I think We that... can't recommend these things to people because we're going to break your... Con- you know, you're going to get so pissed off if we recommend something that breaks your console or yeah. breaks your PVM, the sync, the sync issues I've heard now of those crap passed through super guns now killing two PVMs in addition to people's G-SCART switches and OSSCs. Mm-hmm. And so if I had been Mr. Uh, frugality or whatever from the very beginning, I'm like, oh yeah, just buy the cheapest one and it just works, you know, and so it's fine. Uh, I would have been responsible for frying systems and the same thing for you. Like, you're telling people to go buy the clone... Uh, yeah. The clone... Uh, devices that have way off you know balance sync issues they have capacitors on backwards i remember was an issue with that one that you just showed (laughs) yeah that that, you know weird stuff yeah i think the other thing people seem to think that uh like i get kickbacks on all this stuff um and that's that's actually where the voltar kickback joke started from was people thinking that you know uh, we paid each other to do this stuff or something like that. And, you know, while I do I do sign up for every single affiliate program out there, I'd be stupid not to, right? I work really hard on these. I really hope I'm able to continue to do this, you know, as long as I can. But, no, uh, if I say don't buy something, it's not because I'm trying to get a kickback on something else. It's because I've worked my butt off to try to get build people's trust, and I'm not going to ruin that over some piece of crap device. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, that's your that's the arcade card right there, right? Yeah, Strider. Strider. Hmm. I kind of like the Genesis version better, even though I mean I should try to just like justify having owning an arcade card and say that I like that version of Strider better, but I have to be honest. Hmm. Did we pass by the uh, Turbo Express? Yeah, we'd already passed that, and um, I'll, I'll wait for this to zoom up. Yeah, we passed by that in the in the beginning. And I didn't even, I mean, I didn't even begin to touch upon that because that could be a video in itself, especially with a lot of the mods like the LCD driver and um, and everything else that's Yeah, that's exciting. Out. So. Yeah, I uh, am a huge fan of the Turbo Express even, and I say that knowing that they're super expensive. I think it's worth it every penny if you can get one, especially if you buy one generally that has like dim audio or video. It's just a recap most of the time. Cross your fingers. And uh, you can save money that way. And with, uh, you know, the LCD drive driver is that RGB solution. I think iFix Retro has been installing those for people. That is insanely cool. Yeah. My Turbo Express is like the most modified one on the planet, but it's I haven't got the uh, RGB screen in it yet. I have an actual RGB amp in it, the uh, an older 73141. One. I need to get actually the Voltar upgrade for that. I did it way before his existed. Mm. But like my Turbo Express is a, it's a console, so it has a controller port on it, and you can plug in, you know, for multi controllers, you can plug in the the multi tap. It has like audio and video out through the stereo jack. I recapped it myself. I uh, put an LCD screen in it, which now, of course, is outdated because those were like composite based originally. It's not bad though. But yeah, no, it looks. Of all the consoles, I have to give we have to give PC Engine and Turbo Graphics 16 credit for having probably the best composite out of the box mm. of any console that I can think of, at least. It does it good, and they, like if you compare like the exact same crappy LCD screen and a Nomad running composite, I, I have some videos of this side by side with the Turbo Express. It's really sharp on the Turbo Express. You'd think it was S video or something. Mm. So it does have that going for it, but well, I digress. Uh, this is another comparison shot. So this one's running in a windowed mode. Um, you could barely see any of the interference. You could, uh, you can't see how blurry it is. But that was, you know, I was just really waiting for people to be like, to be watching this video on a ten-year-old cell phone, going, you know, I saw the comparison shots and it looks the same. It's one of the no one has yet, I think. But um, that was certainly a fear. And you know, look, I can't. 
whatever people want to think about what happened in the situation, if this was you who said it, if it was Zach, especially if it was, you know, if it was anybody that constantly teases each other online, like the guys in the retro round table, that quality can't be measured thing is something that I absolutely had to tease about. So it has nothing to do with anything other than that was funny as shit. <laughs> I had yeah. to throw it out there. <laughs> yeah, everybody get, ends up getting their own uh, byline some somewhere along the line. You, see, you just <laughs> screw up. It's okay. I'm I'm pretty happy with Terra Onion. I know their their main guy, whoever he is, isn't so good at PR, but they hired Todd. He's a good friend of mine, and uh, I'm all about Todd. I'm pro Todd. So yeah, if like Todd that. is is Terra Onion, then that's cool with me. So I just say it's just like just make let him do your PR. He's such a a, a better person to interact with. Todd's here. How's it going? Yeah. So. Yeah, so. Everybody thinks I have a side on these kind of things, but it's like, no, I, I never, t- I try to be as neutral as possible when it comes to any drama at all. And so, and I'm just all about the games, you know? My side is whatever yeah. hardware works the best. That's the only yeah. side I'm on ever. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. That was uh, that was my audio install. So for uh, you know my soldering skills, ever since um, I got the Voltar recommended soldering iron, everything's better. I even started to do some really small SMD stuff the other day that didn't suck. Even Ash awesome. gave me the thumbs up, although he did find a, a mistake I made. <laughs> but whatever, I'm getting there slowly. Yeah, I have that waiting for me back in the U.S. Oh yeah, the uh, the Voltar setup. So I don't know if you noticed the the transition between it was supposed to be a slow slide across the screen, but while my computer does fairly well for 1080p stuff, I can't see anything in real time when I'm editing in 4K. So I'm basically editing blind most of the time, and very often the whole screen will just go white and I'm just going to stand there for 30 seconds until the computer CPU catches back up with it. So that's why occasionally you'll see a cut or something in a 4K video where you know, people who make videos would probably be like, what the hell did you do that for? That was probably a mistake, but I just, I couldn't see it. And in order to actually see these, I have to uh, render it, which takes, this video took three and a half hours each time I rendered it. And then I compress it separately. That's a, one of the tricks that um, John taught me, which that's another three and a half hours. And then you upload it to YouTube and wait about five or six hours before it's up at 4K. So it's basically a full day from the time where I've guessed until the time where it's actually up and watchable. Oops, lost you there for a second, sorry. Oh, you're back. All right. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, it's all good. So yeah, that's the uh, that's the only thing. If you, even the brand new SSD S3s, um, I would, if you buy one, I would sand down the inside of the plastic, put a little piece of felt around it, and there you go. I mean, it's two minutes worth of work. Um, and to be honest, even if, uh, even if they fixed that, that scares me. I don't want to scratch up the plastic on these old consoles. So, all right. I forgot what's next. <laughs> the uh, the alien in the background. The I love Mars alien. Uh, Renee's daughter picked that up uh, for me while I was up in Canada. I thought that was awesome. So I'm gonna. Uh, I have a, a niece um, that I'll give that to one of these days, but I thought that was pretty cool. Oh, here we go. The uh, the upper graphics. I, I have to say, I was interested in the upper graphics until you reviewed it. <laughs> and, like, after seeing it, I was like, ooh, I lost 100% of my interest in this thing instantly. Although, I mean, I think it's interesting that it can do the digital video. I will say that. Yeah, so, you know, the the complaints I have is, uh, you know, you get the screen tearing because you can't run it in original mode on most displays. That's not the fault of the upper graphics. That's just the way it's always going to be with this stuff. Um, People ask, is it upper or or uber or something like that? Uber. 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 I don't know. (laughs) But upper. I've been calling it upper. I'm not going to stop. But the the aspect ratio did feel a little bit wrong it felt a little too wide um and i guess i'd have to use one of steve's formulas to figure that out and see if that was uh if that was actually wrong or not but the loading of the uh you know the loading of the the cds really 
it's the most convoluted process and be, this is an older version so when I spoke to the developer I asked to borrow one and he said no and then he said he'd sell me one at like 50 bucks off so we're still talking to, you know four hundred dollars and I no. and he said all right well I have an older used one that I can uh, you know I could sell you for um, you know like uh, I think it was half price or something reused shot <laughs> but uh, uh, I ended up getting it and the new one does have better options it does it, I think it might even have a super system card built in um, but overall I mean it just I don't know you'd really really have to to specifically need um, digital output yep. and uh, my buddy Arturo Sabin uh, I'm gonna give this one to him because he's one of the few like for him to have a setup where he could put the digital out directly into his data path and have the RGB out on his monitor, that would save him a lot of trouble in many, many streaming scenarios. But I can imagine how annoyed he's going to be to go through this process every single time he wants to load a ROM. You know, that that reminds me of, I don't know, 15 years ago, the Easy Flash 4 on the Game Boy Advance. You know, baby's first flash cart that was like one of my first ones that was the process every game had to be individually flashed i i hated that thing so much yep I eventually that just a few years ago they updated it so it works more like an evergraph or an everdrive and you can just copy and paste to it and that transforms it from being like my most hated flash card of all time to being like totally serviceable actually it's pretty nice for the price yeah it wasn't until the everdrive was released that they finally took the time to to get it to work with uh -huh. a real rom cart it's kind of funny yeah i mean the Oprah graphics maybe if the ssds3 didn't exist maybe it's interesting but in a post ssds3 world this thing just makes zero sense to me at all how i mean the price and everything if it was like the budget option and it was like 100 bucks yeah maybe yeah, so I, I never mentioned who was the translator because he's a YouTuber that we all know and I don't want this guy getting pissed at him and I don't want him getting a bad reputation because of me. Um, but I spoke to somebody, on, I guess on the Schmups forum, who talked to the upper graphics guy and I said, hey, this is my opinion, this is my interpretation of this guy, am I right? And the guy I spoke to on Schmups was like, no, I don't, I don't get that at all from him. So I went back, and remember, it was a conversation with the interpreter, many emails back and forth, I think a few, I think a Skype chat too. I went back to the interpreter, and I, you know, I don't, let's just say that he didn't disagree with my interpretation of the situation. So uh, my, my hope was that he'd see this video and go, man, I guess I could do a better job. But based on his attitude, I think it'd be the opposite. I think if the upper graphics guy sees this video, he's going to be like, you know what, I'm locking it down even more. Screw it. This isn't for me. So... I guess we'll we'll see eventually, but it has it has potential. I just four hundred dollars. I can't I can't see it. Yeah, it's crazy, crazy, crazy. And uh, I did just skip over the scan lines because I'm just I'm really tired of trying to to get that to look right. There's nothing I've ever been able to do that YouTube doesn't destroy, even if you're watching in original resolution. So if I render it in 4K and I'm watching on a 4K TV, in the um, the Woozle Game Boy Advance Consolizer, that that really bugged me because those scan lines look good. And it just, uh, it looks like it melted into the background after the compression, so. Yeah, I ran into that too. It's really disappointing when you go back and you watch your video. Like even a live stream. Sometimes I've had live streams where the scan lines look great in the live stream, and then after it's processed, it's like they've, something's happened to them. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. So years oh. ago, there was a trick where you could compress the file at the exact same way that YouTube does, so that when it goes up to YouTube, processing only takes a second because it doesn't recompress it. But that changes every few months, and um, it doesn't always work that way. So. Mm-hmm. Oh, speaking of computers, so Ace helped me build this computer that I'm using right now, and it's a monster for encoding. So if you ever need any advice on com modern components, he's a really good guy to go to. Yeah, I gotta. Hopefully, I'll be able to upgrade this rig soon because it's impossible to edit in 4K with this. It, I mean, this video probably took at least three times longer than it should have to edit, just because of all the times I clicked and I just had to. And just wait for the thing to catch up. Not to mention that I couldn't see any of the edits until after. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, Zach asked if the upper graphics does Hue cards too. The newer version does. The expensive one that the, the guy wouldn't let me borrow. Um, but I've heard it's it's kind of convoluted as well. And it was designed. The feature was designed for people to rip their own Hue cards. It wasn't designed as a ROM cart. Um, so while it probably can do it, my guess is that it would be just as convoluted as the CDs. Crazy. You can kind of see the vertical screen tearing on this too. That's why I use this one. And once again, not not a fault yeah. of the upper graphics. Just uh, you know, I think just unless you have some some video wizardry going on, I don't think you're going to be able to do that refresh rate. So, but uh. I mean, I guess for four hundred bucks, if it had if it had a drag and drop interface like the SSD S3, ROMs and CDs, do you think it would be worth it? Um, it's seven twenty p, right? Yeah. I mean, I realize that it's it's seven twenty p or whatever because that's what is that like a perfect whatever integer scale of the digital? Mm-hmm. No, I don't think it's worth. It. <laughs> No, I would say a, I wouldn't say it's worth two hundred dollars. Honestly, personally, none of this stuff. When it comes to PC Engine World, the stuff is never worth what you pay for it. It's just that's the cost because it's a specialized kind of world and it's very small scale and everything. If the SSD S3 didn't exist, I'd still say no because I like. I mean, I spend a lot of time, and a lot of us have like everybody has a duo. If you're really into the Turbo Graphics. Or you have a briefcase set up, or you have something. And I mean, a stack of Tayo Yudin CDRs, you can get 100 of them for 20 or 30 bucks. Really, it's not that bad of an option if you can put a Volta RGB amp in there. It's not. I mean, that's a great and really nice setup. So, I what I, I mean, that's why I like the SSD S3 is because it does all that kind of stuff. It's like it saves you the 100 bucks on the EverDrive, it saves you the 100 bucks on the arcade card. It's got the RGB video output, which is going to be Voltar quality, hopefully, in the next revision, and uh, Fairbrand X audio, and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, we'll yeah, see. it can be, it can be a really deep hole to go down nowadays. I imagine, especially if you're going to start collecting games too. Mm-hmm. The uh, the one thing I definitely forgot to mention here, or maybe I left it out just because it was getting long, but uh, this amp, um, the amp and the cable from Fide. The amp is on the PC side of things. That's why this plastic connector is so big. Um, so this is a, a, a well-built, um, I think it's a 7314, so the filter is always on, but it's a well-built circuit. And the reason I made the comment of don't use the knockoffs is because I've seen a lot over the years where this connector was just a pass-through and the amp was in the SCART head, meaning that it's drawing the signal from the HU, uh, the HU chip all the way down the cable into the SCART head. And that's not good. So this cable is built right. So yeah, follow mm-hmm. the link. But I think he only makes them a few at a time. So those sold out like right away after the video aired. Yeah, that looks really cool actually. For people who don't, who can't solder or who you know can't afford to have it modded or whatever. Yeah, or just need basic RGB. You know, just I already got everything mm-hmm. I need. Just give me an RGB cable. So this thing, I got it. Uh, I got my explanation wrong, but not in. Correct, I guess. So my thing about the caps wasn't the whole part of the story. Um, I sent this one. Voltar has this thing now. I don't know if he'll throw in any any uh, comments in the chat here, but um, you should never have a direct pass through from those pins, even on the audio side. You need at least a, a small op amp or something, because um, I think it just draws too much current from the chip, and there's no AC filtering on the output side. And it's really disappointing that. Hyperkin wouldn't have spent less than a dollar to add these things, you know? I'm not talking uh-huh. about, like, uh, <laughs> let's redesign it for the best composite quality on the planet. We're talking about, in bulk, 30 cents worth of additions. So, I don't know. I wonder, do they that, not have engineers? That, Bob, that doubles the price of that thing. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> That's kind of true. So, I don't, uh, yeah, I don't understand why they make so many mistakes like this, but... Uh, Chris Galizzi actually sent me that for free, and uh, I told him I would take a look at it, and I never mentioned it again, and I was really hoping he never, wouldn't ask about it, and he didn't. So, because if he, if he said, what did I think, I'd, be, I'd tell him the truth. What the hell is wrong with you people? <laughs> so I, ha- I have this theory that these a lot of these big retro com- uh, companies, 
you know, the really big ones, Hyperkin and those, it's like they purposefully do things wrong because there's no other explanation for some of the things they do. Some not, I'm not stuff. saying they do it nefariously. It's just like there's a bean counter at the end of their product uh, line who like crosses out anything that's going to be – that doesn't just make sense I guess right away. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's just what it seems like because there's always some catch. Yeah. Yeah, you're totally right. When there didn't have to be one, it's just like a catch they throw in. Anyways. So this jail bar thing, um, I hope it came through in the video as good as it did in person, because Mobius purposely sent me in, uh, super graphics that had no mods other than the plastic cut. We're coming to that in a second. But um, because he wanted me to be able to get all of the before and after shots that I needed. So when I, I started testing, I started using the core graphics. I'll get to that part in a bit. But uh, I said, all right, I got to switch over to the super graphics. And I, you know, I said, would you mind if I just did the cap mod? It's only two. It's right on the bottom. I won't screw up your console or anything. And when I did it, I was blown away at what a difference it made. I mean, it was huge. And it was uh, just the easiest thing to do. You don't even really have to disassemble the entire console. You just pop the bottom off, pull the metal shielding off, and uh, there's the two caps right there. Nice. Yeah, that's like the first thing I'm going to do when I get home. Yeah, it's a five-minute thing, too. So, And I, the caps I had were actually a little bit too big, but uh, I checked with uh, Ste and Voltar, and they said, as long as it doesn't go past the pads, you're fine, but I didn't want to wait another couple days. Yeah. That was a leaky cap picture someone sent in and allowed me to use. It was pretty cool. Yep, that's what, what they look like most of the time. Duos right around the audio area on them. Yeah, so I I took my little core graphics, and I I took my time, and I did as good a job as I could possibly do. So it's still not going to be a cruise or a Voltar job, but... It was certainly was something I would have been proud to show on camera. And I think at the end of the night, I think like maybe my wife got home or something and I was just like, all right, cool, let me turn this camera off and you know, let's go watch a movie or something. And I don't know, I've never done this in my life, but I eventually just erased the SD card and started shooting new footage. And then when I went to edit it, I went, where's, where's the folder? Where's the... <laughs> so it worked out because, you know, using Zach's footage was definitely better anyway, but... Um, uh, I was really pissed about that, and I ran into some problems, too. But first, let's get back to that. Why don't you talk about this, because uh, you were the one that turned me on to this whole uh, cutting of this plastic thing. Yes, uh, so my... Uh, I told you I got that great deal on the Super Graphics a long, long time ago. And it was broken, and so I was like, oh, I'm just going to recap it, just like everything else. Every, every other NEC thing I've ever bought just needed a recap to get it working when it had a problem. I, I don't know if I got lucky or what. And so my super graphics came in, and unfortunately, so that standoff there is a design flaw in the super graphics, and it's resting on the PCB with nothing behind it on the other side. So it's always putting pressure on there. So even the slightest pressure on the top of the, the super graphics shell will be will press down on the PCB inside there. And it's very common that that will crack the actual PCB. And it's not off in La La Land on the card either. It's, it's the, that standoff is exactly in the worst place on the entire board. So the it's standoff where goes all of through the, the bottom of the metal. Still don't understand why that's a design part there. That made no sense to me. Uh-huh. And uh, it's where all the vias come into the cart, um, into the pin whatever you call it, the uh, the pin adapter for plugging in your uh, your Who cards. Ugh. And so on mine, that was 72 traces. And they aren't the kind of traces that a normal human being can repair. So I luckily had sent it to – so I sent mine off to the Steve, who's an old-time uh, electrical engineer who does a lot of uh, PC engine stuff. Mm-hmm. Fix it for me for 40 bucks. He told me it took him like two days. <laughs> With a microscope. And so this is a serious problem. If you have have a super graphics or if one passes through your hands, do the future a service and just shave off that stand on the inside. You don't even have to shave the whole thing off. Just enough so that, you know, take take cut it halfway down and then uh, it won't put any pressure on there and you won't be in danger of that. Because yeah. that is something that any other person on earth could not have fixed that pretty much. You know without charging me more than the cost of the super graphics over again. So 
It's a serious problem, but very easy to fix. It's scary. Just one little piece of plastic. What a huge design flaw. Mm-hmm. So here's where uh, here's where the screw up happened. So there are two major things that happened with my core graphics. First, uh, I did a cap replacement on it. I did the whole thing. I was going to show one cap in real time and then speed up, you know, the rest of it. Um, that way, people could get a sense of what it's like. I did the core graphics, even though the core graphics is the least likely to have the bad caps in them, but it's also the least amount. So <laughs> it was a, an easy way for me to do it. Uh, and then I was going to add the Voltar mod. So I did everything, and it looked great. Uh, that's an old one. That's not the, uh, the one I did. But um, I put it back, or I didn't put it back together. I left it open on the table, and it wouldn't boot. I'm going, well, what the hell? So I checked, I rechecked. You know, I'm uh, instant messaging Zach. I'm texting Cruz. I'm going, you know, what the hell? What am I going to do? You know, uh, what do I look for? So, you know, Cruz said look for s small cracks in the motherboard sometimes with the older ones if you flex the motherboard. Um, and, then, you know, maybe reflow some of the chips just to see. So I reflowed pretty much all of the chips. Um, and then something else happened because I bridged two pins, but then I used some, you know, desolder braid and everything was fine. And nothing. Still, it would freeze. Uh, you would get garbage on the screen, and then I just said, "All right, fine. I'm gonna I'm gonna send this off to somebody that's that know that really knows what they're doing." I put it all back together, plugged it in, and it worked fine. So <laughs> the problem was the ribbon cable on the inside, um, and that's you know I don't know if that's a problem with all of these, but I just imagine after sitting folded because anybody that's seen them, it folds on top of itself twice. So I imagine a ribbon sitting that way for 30 years. When I pull it back off, it probably broke all the dried mm -hmm. and cracked traces. Mm -hmm. And then when I put it back, there's probably just enough touching. So, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, that was that was rough. But it works now. Um, and uh, the, the Voltar mod on the inside's there. So I'm just, you know, like I said, I'll end up giving that to Art. He could still definitely use that one. But uh, that was frustrating as hell. And the difference between the core graphics models. So that's something uh, somebody asked in the chat earlier, and that's something I didn't want to get into because uh, some of the core graphics come with the uh, port on the side for composite video. The original one is RF. But as far as functionality goes, there's no difference, right? Yeah, they're, they, uh, they're all exactly the same. That's the only difference. And the awesome shell colors. <laughs> Yeah, that's um, the specific reason I got this is because it looked cool next to the other colors of the consoles where I put it in my shelf. So, uh, yeah, it's you know that's pretty much the only thing that I could suggest is buy it based on whatever color you want. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the gray ones at least can't uh, yellow very much. Hmm. I've got a core. Let's say I have a white PC engine core graphics, and then I have a core graphics two. And the only reason I got it was because it matches the uh, Super CD-ROM two, even though it's usually plugged into the Super Graphics. I'm a shallow, shallow man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Voltar's teasing me in the chat now about. Uh, he told me it was the ribbon cable. Yeah, he probably did, but it was probably one of those things where. Um, like, I can't... Like, I think I... No, I do remember. He told me that it was a ribbon cable, so I used a, um, a multimeter to test each individual connection to each side, and it all worked fine. So it must have been while I was holding the ribbons, uh, like, the, the thing up, trying to get to each side that I was squishing them together. So, yeah. Um, but this is... a. Uh, this is something that demonstrates some of the behind-the-scenes stuff. First of all, let me go back there. Did you see that where he um, did the move where he swings the, the thing around? Uh, uh -huh, yeah. On Turkin. Right or... there. So my camera could only do 480, or 4K 30 frames per second. 1080p 60, but 4K 30. So because I'm shooting something that's running at 60 frames a second, you can't see the thing because it hits at every other uh -huh. frame. I thought that was that's funny. funny. But this is real footage of what happens to me when uh, when I try to dial in perfect settings with the super graphics or with the the core graphics. The OSSC goes nuts, and that's uh, a BVM that's known to have compatibility issues. So this is just another example of um, why the new way that I capture video is is solving all of these problems. I hope to get that video out. My goal is to have it out by the end of the week, but I'll probably run into a whole bunch more problems and <laughs> it'll delay it a week, but. Yeah, that was craziness. Speaking of the OSSC, thank you for hooking me up with the uh, newest revision of it. My pleasure. 
And uh, that worked out for me because when I that's now my second, so it just goes direct DVI into the um, uh, data path. But depending on this new capture method, I might end up getting rid of that too. So cool, well, I appreciate it. Oh, hey, we should dispel a myth right here that no one else on Earth talks about. Oh yeah. So there's this. I think it's a very funny myth that everybody should buy a Duo R or a Duo RX because the caps are so glorious and you never oh. need to change them. Have you heard that? Yeah, that's bullshit. Yeah, because it, if it has the words NEC printed on it, you need to recap it. <laughs> that's yeah. just the way it is. Even though it's more reliable and it doesn't have the bad, you know, real bad caps that like leak all over the board and everything, like a Duo R and a Duo RX... You, it, it's time they were built in you know 1992 or whatever mm. they're way way past their uh, specked out lifespan you got to recap these things yeah um so i think that's another kind of misconception that people have is that some people think that um just because you don't have leaking caps doesn't mean the caps are bad or aren't bad so there's two things that could happen to the caps you know they they explode and leak all out or the fluid inside could dry up so you could still have bad or or failing capacitors without it looking like it's bad and i think that might be where a lot of the um uh a lot of the misconceptions come from yeah although voltar's saying here that the duo r and rx come from come from a completely different plant with a much better uh bom and they won't destroy the hardware Okay, so he's saying they won't self-destruct in the way that a duo actually does self-destruct, you know, through time. Just sitting there with nothing going on. It will leak out all of your board and the acid will eat everything away. But um, so what I do when I, I, I do, I enjoy recapping. It's like a hobby, I guess. I recap everything. I mean, I've recapped a blender before. It's just something I do. Uh, it comes from, uh, so one thing I do is I like to take, when I remove a cap, I'll put it straight on an ESR meter and then it goes in one of two boxes, like a box of caps that are fine, you know, for like the, the next blender that comes along, not for a console and I'll, I'll keep those, but it's like one out of 20 or one out of 30 is pretty far off, even if they look fine. And that's, you know, if you're looking at like a Genesis has what, like 30 or some of them have like 30 caps on them, on them or something. I mean, it's it's worth it to do a recap. Some people are really anti just shotgun recapping. And I agree with that if, if you're putting a console in danger. But I think it's fine to do a shotgun recap if it's going to preserve the console and you get to put these really nice modern caps on there from DigiKey and stuff or mouse or wherever you get them. Yeah. Yeah, so these price lists are, are trying to be you know i put approximate on all these things um the 300 dollars i've seen it cheaper i've seen them way more expensive uh cap kits cables and stall board that's all accurate but the 150 for installation if if service is needed that's something um that's something i have to to try to hit a middle ground on because in in the case where it's a uh, a console that's never been opened before and there are, you know the caps are uh, are failing but not leaking all over the place 150 is you know is more than your average modder would charge definitely cuz it's a lot of work but if the opposite end happens if you have the leaky caps and you have to sit there and you have to trace all of the lines to find out where the the lines are broken if you have to reconnect traces clean it up just like zach showed in his video you know he first had to scrub with uh isopropyl then he went in there i think with vinegar or something and then with um, a felt or a fiberglass brush i mean that's a ton which of i ordered after watching that awesome video me too and uh yeah i mean that i would honestly think that if the 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 console that Zach did in his video, if he did a full recap and installed his board, um, I think that should be charged more than 150 because that was probably four or five hours worth of work to start to finish. Not yeah. to mention the fact that you probably are going to want to at least check the CD drive. Maybe not necessarily um, calibrate it on a scope or anything, but they all have some kind of weird thing that you got to just, even just uh, removing them from the, uh, removing the whole drive assembly kind of just putting it back down and making sure it's seated properly. So it's, um, yeah, that's, that was just a guess. Uh, and I, I hope people understood the approximate was, uh, was the true meaning there. Cause an easy one's fine. It'll probably be a hundred, but if it was something like Zach showed, it's going to be a lot more and, and deservedly. So, 
Here's a trick people can use to save some money. When you order it on eBay, just have it sent straight to Voltar. <laughs> you just make sure to throw at least one or two broken Game Gears in the box. Uh huh. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I threw in the pricing for the Tayo Yudin CDRs and the Turbo Everdrive. And to be honest, if you don't own Tayo Yudin CDRs, you should just pick some up now before you can't get them anymore. Because once the new old stock's gone, which will probably be a few more years, but pick a couple hundred of them up just, just for the heck of it. Um, you know, and uh, I, the Plex door burners, that was, there was one day where I was, you know, it was late at night, it was about to go to bed, and I get a message from Zach saying, buy this right now. I didn't even, I didn't even look, I just hit buy. And uh, I guess somebody had posted a Plex door burner for like $30, and they sell for, for hundreds, so. Yeah, I've got a, uh, I have an ancient, so part of the reason why I like discs is because I've got a really nice uh, old school burning setup. Mm -hmm. And a cool thing that you can do is, so if you can get a nice Plexter, Japanese made uh, on eBay, or there were some really nice Yamahas made in Japan too, that can do like 1X or 2X, those are the ones to look for, made in Japan. I mean, they have inside, they have like brass gears. I mean, they are beautifully really? made. They're, yeah, very highly engineered. And you can take those and you can put them like if you're at Goodwill and you see like um, an old style DVD-ROM burner, CD-ROM burner that had an external case. Mm -hmm. You know those things? I don't yeah. know what they're called. It's like you open them up and inside there it's just an IDE to USB adapter. That's exactly just, the one I got, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I have two of those and that's why I burn it 1x, baby, and I just burn two at a time, you know, to save. It takes, it takes like an hour to burn a disc, but – and I realize that's – that's insane but so i got the plex door px-880u and that came in a usb that i took out and put inside of mine um and the the thing that i've heard over the years is it's not so much that you need to buy it or burn it at 1x it's that you should burn at the slowest speed that the burner would support because like mine only goes as mm -hmm. low as 16x but the burns have come out perfect i haven't had a single one not work so I think that, while I think it might, maybe might be better to do 1X, the more important thing is a, a known good burner, like the Plex Store, at its slowest speed. Yeah. Uh, that would be a really cool video to see, like, one of these channels that does these really in-depth examinations of issues. Because, I, I mean, I've, I've also heard people say you should burn at the speed that the console reads at. I don't, but it's like, these are just... Oh, yeah. Things people say, so it would be cool to see that like actually tested. Be probably, uh, probably a myth or something. So yeah, yeah. The uh, the core graphics cost is there as long as you don't need a cap replacement or anything like that. That was you know sort of accurate. Um, I do love Console Five's uh, recap kits. Yeah, I've, I think you I've mentioned them. Been ordering by accident pretty much once a week there. Because I'll order something and I'll, you know, I'll text Cruz and be like, "Do we need anything from from Console Five? You know what's going on?" Uh, that, by the way, is um, that was my internal job on the uh, core graphics. And this green wire, yes, I did connect it in. I had snapped a picture before <laughs> before I left it <laughs> hanging. No one picked up on that yet. But uh, yeah, every time I go to Console Five, I'm like, "What else could I need?" So I always that, end up that with green wire is not the one you soldered to the top of the cap. No, it does look like that. That is pretty funny. <laughs> but yeah, I. Luke, Luke takes good care of me. Luke ships out right away, so very appreciative of all that. I've worked with him to make a few kits for things. Cool. I actually, I just order in bulk from DigiKey these days, though, and I just keep a big stockpile of caps on hand to uh, feed my addiction. It's too expensive to do individual kits anymore. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I was hoping... Uh, I was I was debating whether to do the flashing red X or the thumbs down on that. I'm always hoping that somebody's not going to just glance up at the screen and not even notice that I was saying not to do that and look and uh -huh. see two cables plugged in. But you know, yeah, that's an interesting note. I had I had no idea that you couldn't that you I had no idea that you could do that and that you shouldn't do that both at the same time. So the reasoning is, and I double checked with Zach on this one. Um, as soon as you plug in the SSD S3. Whether you plug in an RGB cable on the output side, the THS amp is now drawing the signal from the main chip inside the, you know, whatever the console is, the core graphics, let's just say. So if you, 
uh, if you installed, like, say, Zach's board in there, now you have two THS 7374s pulling from that chip at the same time. And it may or may not hurt it, but both myself and Mobius have found that you get interference. So I just thought it was a smart, a smart move to tell everybody don't. Because yeah. I'd rather not take a chance and pull double the current from that, which is why I showed the, uh, you know, the entire video circuit removed from that board. So. Mm-hmm. So some of these prices started to crack me up, you know, 600, 650, 1000, you know, all that stuff. Uh I you know, it kind of really does show you have to love this stuff in order to want to spend the money to get all the extras on it. Yeah, it's big, it's big bucks for a PC engine. No way around it. Yeah, the I just can't believe it's 150 this- bucks for a PC engine nowadays. Cuz I remember when I used to tell people like go buy these things, they're like 40 bucks, you know, it's like the greatest deal in gaming, blah blah blah. They're so expensive. Yeah. Yeah, and here comes the uh, the the crazy put together one. So super graphics, it looks amazing. Uh, the one shot that I forgot to do, I sent somebody a picture of it, but I forgot to put it in the video. Is I put the core graphics on top of the super graphics to show how much unbelievably bigger it was than, uh, um, and it just kind of cracked me up, especially with that CD-ROM module. That thing is massive. Mm-hmm. It's like the size of a CDI. <laughs> you, you can make it even bigger too. So one add-on that they sold is this giant, massive cable. Mm-hmm. So it plugs into the back of like the Super Graphics or whatever, and on the other end of the cable, you plug it into your regular old Super CD-ROM. Mm-hmm. And so you have you can have this monster kind of thing built out of your Super Graphics. Yeah, I, I have had I have my Super Graphics uh, rocking a, su- a su- Super CD-ROM too, right now at least. So the one thing I didn't talk about at all because I just I didn't I didn't want to go down a rabbit hole that had nothing to do with my conclusions or the different devices, but the um, you know the the interface unit uh, I always got to throw my D32 in there I almost lost that last year so I always got to show some love in these videos but uh, nice. yeah I mean I guess you could RGB mod the interface unit you could, or you could RGB mod the console itself but. Is that even a good choice for anybody anymore with all of these new options out there? Well, a briefcase looks cool. It looks very cool. I have a full briefcase set up, and I would like to get uh, Voltar's RGB mod for it eventually, just because. Hmm. But no, it's not. I mean, really, if we're talking money-wise, none of this stuff makes sense anymore. You know, now that the Super SD, the SSD S3 is out, none of it really makes that much sense i mean even the super graphics doesn't make sense honestly i have i have one you've got one there it's five games yeah i (laughs) mean could you imagine if somebody just getting into this hobby was like hey i hear the super graphics version of ghosts and goblins or uh you know the just the arcade perfect i you know i love that game how much how much if i want to do that in um hd on my television and you showed him this <laughs> uh-huh. almost two grand for that plus all the support for all the games like oh yeah. man that's uh that's a little too crazy you know this makes the mister look like a pretty good deal for people who said at the beginning you know mister's expensive i mean it can do super graphics so Whoever if you want to play super graphics mister is expensive doesn't it, no disrespect meant, but they clearly have no idea what it is. Yeah. What it actually is, you know? That chip on there, if you were to buy it separately, would cost more than the Mystery. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's like 300 and 350 bucks worth of hardware on there that yeah. we get subsidized. But, anyways. Yeah. Uh, basically, what I realize is I need to sell some crap when I get home. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly. Well, I abs- uh, absolutely wanted to show some uh, some Mr. Love in this video, but uh, you know I was Beautiful. impressed with how it performed. Um, although I got some weirdness, I got some weird stutter in 1080p. I actually reached out to uh, Risha, Risha. I never know how to pronounce anybody's name, but uh, um, I got some really good help moving that to 720p and confirming the different settings because I didn't care about lag. I just wanted the smoothest image possible for this. Um, and that's exactly what I got. 720p, perfectly smooth image, and then I just used post-processing to up it to 4K, and I thought it looked nuts. I, I thought it looked absolutely yeah. perfect. Yeah, it's beautiful. Great game, too. Isn't this uh Yotega yep. just uh, put that out on the Mister as well? He did. Yeah, he did 1943. This is 1941. 19, right. uh, 
1941, that is such a great game that I, I mean, I'm an arcade game collector. Mm-hmm. And so I have this weird view that, like, <clears throat> that game justifies the super graphics as much as they cost because it's it's an arcade game. It just feels really good. It's it's heavy duty. I remember playing 1943 on my NES, and uh, when we got it home, you know, I had to sit there and smash on the controller. I was like, oh, it looks just like those kids in the commercials. And that, that was exciting for about a minute. And my dad was like, no, screw this. And he went the next day and he got one of those, uh, like a flight controller with suction cups on the bottom and uh-huh. the, uh, the auto fire. So that was pretty neat. Yeah. So that's how we played 1943 for years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or I, meant, I meant to say 1942 is what Jotega just did. In 1943, he just announced, though. So yeah. that's coming soon. Looking forward to all that. Well, that's pretty much the end. The uh, Fuda was a, a huge, huge help with that as well. I, uh, I keep trying to get him on for an interview, and then I haven't had any time whatsoever to do interviews lately, which stinks because there's a lot of good people I really want to talk to. So uh, so what do you think? Did I miss anything? Well, let's not leave me right there. All right. <laughs> uh, did I miss anything um, You know, other than what we've already discussed? Was there anything else that I should have talked about? Uh, any Any major mistakes? I didn't see a single mistake at all. I liked it. I mean, somebody in the comments said, lol, you said the core graphics came in different colors, lol. It did. And it's like, but everybody <laughs> knows that you were saying that the PC Engine came in all these different colors. And yeah, the core graphics came in different colors. So yeah. so no, you didn't make any mistakes at all. I can't wait to see, you know, you come back to PC Engine some more because there's still a lot of ground to cover too, which is cool. Well, I, you know, it's funny too because – all the years I was in bands and did recordings and all that stuff, so many of my friends would say things like, oh, the album's done and I never want to listen to it again. And I was never that guy. I always, I always loved the things I was working on. And the, the GBA video that I did, that was a ridiculous amount of work, but still play GBA. I still love it. Still talk to Woozle all the time. He even was just texting me while, while I was here. But I don't want to look at a Dreamcast or a PC Engine again for at least a few months. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't, I don't know me. what it is. I just think I've spent so much time with all of those that I just, uh, I just, I don't know. I'll, I'll take a break from those consoles and move on. Mm-hmm. Well done, sir. This is really good. Thank you. Very impressed with your. Uh, I don't do standalone videos so well, so I don't know how you guys do it, and you just look like a natural. You've got it. The, the, the main honest reason why my videos haven't looked like this before is just time. So, and that's, that's a problem that I'm working on now that I'm hoping uh, to get a little more help with, I guess. But it's, I have a choice between I could, I could work on the website, I could work on the news posts, I could work on videos, but I can't. Or I could help a lot of the behind the scenes stuff I've been doing, but I can't do all of them. So every time I do these videos, you know, you'll see there's you know no news posts at all until that Monday because mm-hmm. I know Tuesday I got to shoot the the podcast and um, I've been, you know yeah, it's you're like to... people you're like the busiest guy in retro gaming <laughs> doing a weekly news that now doesn't stop it's every single week no matter what you've got it on there I don't I have no idea how you do that in addition to all the other stuff. Yeah, that's that's the one like uh, rule I set for myself is there have been many times where I've been, you know, like yesterday, I think I worked, um, I'm not exaggerating, I think 9 a.m. to 1230, you know, after midnight. And I I had to stop myself and say at like 5 p.m. I'm like, I got to do the podcast. I've never missed. I'm enjoying what I'm working on. It's a lot of work, but I got to do this. You know, I don't. And that kind of makes things easier because I don't always having something that I have to do that. And I, I've never, I've never missed a Q and a, but sometimes I do it a little early, a little late. I don't think anybody care about that to be honest with you. But, uh, the I, setting those rules does make scheduling easier. Cause I know like, all right, I can't just disappear for a week and work on a video, even if I really want to. So, Oh, mm-hmm. well, well, Crazy. how about anybody in the chat? Uh, I don't have too much more time. I have to go work on one of those next videos. I was really hoping to get that out. By the end of the week, provided my PC holds up, and oh, that was the other, <laughs> that was the other thing. Before I go, the the funny little anecdote is my my PC kept crashing every time I tried to render, and my laptop did as well. But the laptop wasn't designed, the video card in there wasn't designed to be used with Premiere, so I I couldn't imagine that it would hold up to a 4K render. And I just something a few months ago happened, and something told me, like the IT nerd in me, you know, your computers in a corner, why don't you take the sides off and put a fan on it and see what happens? Mm. And it worked. So for this video, I went, 
you know, let me try that again. So I pulled it out, turned, pulled the sides off of it. The sides are still off. I haven't put them back on. And right here is a window, and it was really, really cold that day. So I had a fan kind of aiming from the window into the PC, and every render worked since. So it must nice. be one of those things where the computer's not You're just quite, frying it, yeah. Yeah, it's not quite overheating, <laughs> but when it hits 100% CPU, maybe it, you know, maybe it's just enough to crash the program. So, yeah. Uh, Matt Clausen asked, any future meetups planned at Brooklyn Video Games? Yeah, actually, I was talking to somebody uh, who has a couple of pretty rare NG Dev Team games, uh, and I, I mentioned to uh, to Steve, the owner, or actually, I think I talked to Jose, I gotta talk to Steve about it, but I thought it would be pretty funny uh, if we did, because they have two Neo Geo MVS stream setups. So it would be fun if we did a main one on Twitch and then a secondary one on uh, on YouTube or, or whatever they choose and just have people down to be able to play those NG dev team games and really give them a try. I think that'd be I think that'd be pretty fun. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I want to see that. I want to see Krautbuster. I haven't really seen a review of that yet besides the uh, teaser videos they put out or whatever. He got it. And uh, that that was oh, kind of nice. where this all started is he said, "Hey, do you have um you know, do you have any interest in this? I said, yeah, absolutely. Let's uh, let's do it. Let's do something fun. So we just gotta we just gotta make time. And for that's that. that's insanely cool that they do real hardware arcade streaming because nobody does that really. That is yeah. so rare. And, that's uh, something I want to dabble in when I'm back in the U.S. But and they just have people coming up and playing on the the system there in their live streams. It's really cool, and they can show competitions and all that kind of stuff. Yep. And uh, I think you met Tech as well. He and Cruz do all the tweaking of that, and they get the they get everything perfect. It's very impressive. Mm -hmm. um, Will asked, "When is the triple bypass install guide page coming?" That's uh, that's on the top of the list of things to do. Um, there's been so much work done on that one. Cruz really took this and ran with it. He did just an unbelievable amount of testing. Uh, Voltar discovered what we think is the fix for Genesis Model 1 bypasses. Um, and that's, uh, you know, that was actually, uh, we have, we've only tested like three consoles, but we're going to keep doing it, and I think the fix is in. So that, that would nice. really be the last piece of the puzzle. Once, that, uh, once that's kind of finished off, then I'll start the documentation and everything. But the what you can do with the Genesis today is game changing compared to what you could do a year ago. I'm really, really happy about that. I just, uh, as you'll see with the next video that I keep saying should be out Friday, but who knows? Um, I want to do with to the triple bypass, the exact same thing I'm doing to this upcoming video. There's six new pages on the website, <laughs> all of her incredibly detailed. And the video is like, I think the video is going to end up being like 45 minutes long. Uh, so yeah, it's, um, it's really, it, it, it deserves all of that, but that's a lot of work. This is this current video has been six months in the making where I finally started doing Oof. the things that, you know, not making the video, but doing the work that would lead to today. So, yeah, pretty impressive. Well, that would be awesome. I've got a stack of Genesis back in the U.S. that I need to, uh, well, one of them I need to update, and the other ones are all going to be freshly modded. So looking forward to that. Awesome. Well, uh, thank you so much for everybody uh, who came in and participated live. If you're watching this after the fact, um, you know, this was just fun to hang out, talk to Smoke Monster, to, to kind of vent about some of the process of this video and give some of the behind-the-scenes look. And, of course, let me know if you want to see more of these. I always thought it would be kind of fun to do something like this and just talk about what goes on during these videos, but I didn't know if anybody would be bored to death or if it's something that people would think, yeah, you know, I'll listen to my car when I'm driving somewhere and got nothing better to do. So, <laughs> yeah, let, let me know your feedback, and uh, we'll go from there. Yeah, cool. Thanks for having me, man. This is a lot of fun. Absolutely. I love to talk shop with you. Yeah, <laughs> Hell yeah, man. We will absolutely do this again, and uh, I will see everybody else soon. Yep, take care.